for energy production, you want to delay the flowering. And the reason for that is because the plant will continue to put on biomass essentially until it will flower. And if it doesn't flower or the flowering is greatly delayed, you can produce biomass essentially for five times as much as what you produce from a grain variety. Major points of this paper will be um, the identification of Maturity Locus 1, which has been historically important in the conversion program for sorghum. And um, I think it's one of the more effective genes in terms of when it's not functional, it really makes the plants flower early. So flowering time is important for sorghum, no matter what you want to use it for. One of the really interesting things about these maturity loci is that you can kind of use them in a modular fashion to sort of make a sorghum that will flower whenever you need it to for any purpose. So it's important for grain sorghum, but also for the bioenergy sorghum it's important because you want to delay flowering in that instance. And the more you delay flowering, the more biomass these sorghum will put on. So this is a plant that is recessive it has a non-functional copy of the MA1 gene. And so this plant is about 90 days old now, but it flowered after about 55 days. The taller plant is also about 90 days old, and it's still vegetative with no signs of floral initiation. And these plants that have a um, full set of dominant maturity loci can flower in as many as 200 days. So the difference is it's quite striking. I think historically, breeders would use phenotype to select for plants that were the ones that they wanted, the varieties or phenotypes that they liked. But now, when you know what genes are responsible for these phenotypes, you can go in very early on a molecular level and find out and very pretty accurately predict what's going to happen with these plants flowering.